Hi guys, Ryu here with another tutorial for hardops in Blender. Today I want to talk to you about Dice and Twist 360. Now if you think about knife in Blender as a shark, then Dice would be a megalodon on croc with a headache on a really bad day. Because that thing is wild and let me show you why. If I take a cube and wanted to insert some loops across this cube. If I press Ctrl R, you can see I can do it with ease on any axis. And the reason for it is that because cube is made of quads, so the loops go through very easily. However, if I have a mesh like this, which one of the sides is made of engons, well, I can insert loops this way, but this way it's gonna be a problem. It gets even worse if I applied all these modifiers here. So if I go to operations and I'm going to click on smart apply. Now you see that my loops do not go across anywhere. Well, that's where dice comes in. You can access dice in hard ops by going to Q, mesh tools and dice. You can also access this in edit mode by going to Q and dice. If I open dice, and move my mouse left to right. You can see loop cut jumping between axes. If I scroll my wheel, I'm gonna add or deduct loop cuts. You got two menus. One is toggle by H, the other by tilde key. This menu will show you the axes, number of loops and methods. Now what is method? So you have a knife project and mesh intersect. I had a chat with Bonjourno7 yesterday and he said that uh, knife project is more accurate and should be used first. But basically they do the same thing. It just, if knife project doesn't work for some reason on your, on your geo, just switch to mesh intersect and try this one instead. Another option in the menu is smart apply. And smart apply, if I press S, will apply all modifiers. So it apply all the booleans to this mesh and the mirror. So now if I go to um, my modifier stack, you can see that I have only bevel and weighted normals active. Then you have this option here. So twist and smart apply. So this will smart apply and twist the um, this cube. So if I press T and click my mouse, you can see it goes to twist 360, right? Let me sharpen this cube because it really needs it. There you go. So now, now you can see that with the cuts on in the mesh, um, the faces are really nicely curved. Now shift S is for adjusting segments, but this is exactly the same thing as wheel scrolling. So will scroll and shift s will do the same thing then x y z of course will flip the axis and you can turn all of them at the same time when you can have one or two active and if you will scroll or shift s and add or deduct segments they will um dice will add equal amount of loops for each axis the last option in the menu is to shift click so if i shift click now i will actually shift this to live so now it has become a geometry which i can further adjust so for example if i go to edit mode you can see that this is just one plane because it's created out of array and this place so if you wanted to you could for example add additional loops as such Or you could apply, for example, the array and start adjusting individual planes. So for instance, I could rotate this if I wanted to. Right. I could move it as well. So you can do all kinds of crazy stuff with this tool. It's really cool. And then, of course, you can select this, um, this mesh, second mesh, go to Q menu, booleans and knife. So it will do exactly the same as dice, but you can actually 
um, take full control of the mesh that you are using as a knife. But what if I wanted to apply dives to this mesh? And, you know, I didn't want to hotline any edges or, for example, disturb any of these, um, any of these curved bevels. This is quite problematic because, you know, I can't see what I'm doing. Well, that's why you have access to dice in edit mode. Because now if I go to edit mode and click on dice, I can precisely see how my edges will cut the mesh. So if I adjust my wheel scroll, um, then I can move, you know, my dice or deduct or uh, add some segments to sort of place my dice exactly as I want it. And then, then again, you could go to shift and, uh, you know, shift it to live and still keep um, editing this, um, this slicer. So I could do it in perspective mode, in orthographic mode, any, any, any way uh, I want. And then if I go to my twist 360 and apply and sharpen, I'm going to have really nice results. So if I adjust my bevel, you know, I don't have as many problems as would I normally have if, for example, I sliced across some problematic mesh. In addition to all of that, if you hover your mouse over the dice tool, you will have additional options um, and ways of accessing the tool. So for instance, if I alt click it, um, I'm going to apply all my modifiers. So if I have a modifier going on in here, right? So let's make a cut. So then I have a boolean going on. And now if I go to mesh tools and alt click my dice, um, my boolean is going to get applied. With this mesh being sliced, we can play with twist 360. So let's talk about it now. You can see that my object is facing the front so if i go to my point menu and click on front view you can see it's facing this uh, main uh, side of the object with all the details is facing the front and there is a reason for it so if i go to my tool and uh, to mesh tools and click on twist 360 you can see that the orientation is of uh, of the object is correct from the start now, you could always flip this orientation by pressing R, right, or F. So, for example, if I wanted to flip this on an axis, I would press X, which will actually toggle a different axis. But you see that this object is still facing the front. And I could try to rotate it, right? But it's not always going to work in my favor. So what you want to do in this case is to actually have this object rotated on whichever axis that you need and apply the rotation. Now then if I'm going to go to twist 360 and I'm going to press X and I'm going to press R until my rotation is, you know, the one, the one I want, you can see that now Let's reduce the amount of this segment because it's really choppy. Apply this uh, um, this displacement and let's sharpen this. You can see that now it's correctly oriented on, uh, on this axis. So it's rotated by 90 degrees to the side view. And I can still, of course, go to my modifier stack and keep adjusting it. So I could add more segments. I could play with the displacement strength or deformation. So um, here's my displacement strength and so on. I could of course scale it, rotate it, do whatever I want with it. Another interesting thing that you can do with this tool is let's go back to uh, this axis and you could actually duplicate it by pressing shift d so now i have two um two displacements going on 
And if I apply this one, so let's make it a little bit bigger and apply it, right? And let's sharpen it because it looks slightly awful. Okay. See, now I can actually create some really interesting stuff with that thing. So with very few clicks, you could create some complicated stuff. For example, some buildings in your scene in the background or some items in an environment, etc. Then, for example, you could merge um, the side faces together. So if I press Shift M, you see my mesh will sort of clean up a bit. And the reason for it is that this Shift M, um, Shift M option, if I go to my edit uh, mode, it removed the side faces, you see. So if I, for example, bevel this mesh now, I'm going to have a little bit better results than before, just cleaner because the faces are actually gone. So they do not overlap. Another thing that you can do with this tool is split the angle. So at the moment, if I press shift M to just clean the shading, you see, if I press A, I can actually split the angle. So from 360 here in the bottom, I can change it to a different angle. Now, the problem with this tool is that you cannot scroll outside your screen. So if I do that, um, it will stop. Unlike, for example, with Auto Smooth in Hardops, which is has a continuous scrolling, so you can keep moving your mouse continuously to infinity, and it will just keep reducing the angle. However, I can still change it if I apply it and go to my um, deform modifier and I can see adjust angle in here. So for instance, I could flip it the other way around to a negative angle and do something uh, like this. So it's a really cool uh, little tool and it's, it's really fantastic what you can do with it. So once you wrap your head around how it works, um, it could be quite powerful. So that's all I want to talk about in this video. Uh, you can see that Twist 360 works extremely well with dice, but dice could be used for all kinds of stuff, um, you know, slicing your mesh when you need it, and creating custom knives, etc. So it could be very powerful um, if you in implement it into your workflow. Thanks for watching, guys. Uh, hope you enjoyed the vid. If you did, drop us a like and subscribe, and I'll talk to you in the next video.